On Benawad's Discord, I noticed this comment that went unanswered by a user named Maui. Maui, whatever. They say, hi, I just finished watching the Intermediate React interview, and a lot of the comments say that Clement overcomplicated the flattening process. What would be an easier, better alternative to flattening it? And I thought, what a great opportunity for me to offer a completely unsolicited code review. So here's a summary. Ben is a maverick YouTube programmer with lots of projects under his belt that many people have enjoyed. And Clement is the founder of AlgoExpert.io. I am sure if you are on YouTube regularly and you are a programmer, you've seen those ads. Ben recently released a video where he conducted an intermediate level React interview with Clement, who was the prospective candidate. The interview lasted about 45 minutes. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the final result of the code and then offer any suggestions based on what I know. And the hope is that people that watch this video will learn just a little something. So this is the prompt. To ping this API endpoint, which would retrieve a list of users and some details about those users and then display this table which has all this location data the columns must be sortable and there's a search box here where you can search for things the first thing that you should do is to go and take a look at the information that you have been given and in this case we have code sandbox which not much there hopefully if you are being given an examination on code sandbox that you would have been given some resources on how to use it or maybe given some time to prepare at least and then the second thing is this API endpoint. First question that I had was, does this API endpoint have any documentation whatsoever? And given it's randomuser.me, I'm guessing that this is a very popular resource and there's gonna be lots of documentation. So here we are on the randomuser.me website. It's got lots of stuff here. It's got a how to use, which uses jQuery. So we're not gonna use that. And it's got a sample of the results, but they have something even more important, which is the documentation. Mm. Now they have some interesting stuff here like formats. So we can actually request this to be in JSON, in a pretty JSON, in CSV, YAML, or XML. We can already see that we're using this query param results equals 20. So throwing that into the browser, we can see what the output is. And let's add other things like format CSV. Oh, it downloaded a CSV. What about XML? Yeah, okay, we got XML. And we have now the CSV as well. Location street number, state, street name, lots of good stuff. But you can see the table is already organized in the way that Ben wanted it. So this might have been a shortcut that wasn't taken advantage of. But we're not gonna look at what could have happened, we're gonna look at what did happen. So we have an enum for sort directions, we have fetch data which uses Axios, we have a function called flatten locations, which I think the user on Benawad's Discord was talking about. Extract object keys, sort data, get next sorting direction, get filtered rows. Now already I'm seeing a really nice trend where these function names already make sense. I actually don't need to look at what these are doing because I have an idea given the function name. This is already a good sign. Then we have an app and it returns a table with heads and bodies and all that. It's about 198 lines long. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this fetch data from here and put it into its own file because this really doesn't have anything to do with this React component. And then something I'm going to do along with that is this stuff here, this processing of the data actually doesn't need to be done here at all. It can be done as part of our fetch data file. So here we have the result, which is already including a bunch of things, which I'll have to explain. So I've named it get data just to be consistent. And I've created an enum, which will restrict the formats to either JSON or CSV. I'm not gonna go over the CSV solution, but it's there just in case if somebody else wants to try it. Now, the first thing that's different is that my URL looks completely different. Why is that? URL is a native browser class. And by instantiating it, you have a whole bunch of features that are available to you. The first thing is I put the path here and then I put the base URL here. You don't have to do this. You could put everything in the path and it will parse it. But if the option is available to me, I prefer just splitting them up. And the second thing, which is probably the most valuable for me personally, is sometimes I mess up the search params. Sometimes I put duplicate search params. Sometimes I use a 
question mark and not an ampersand or an ampersand and not a question mark. So to reduce human error, I like to use the URL search params because it's there, it's given to me. And I can set these params to whatever I want. And then when I call url.href, it will give me a perfectly formed URL. Now, fetch is another native browser function that pretty much replaces the need to use Axio. Here's an example here on the MDN website. So I form this request object from the URL and then I create a response from the fetch. And if the response is not okay, I return a reject promise. If the format is CSV, I return response.txt. And then if the format is JSON, I return my response JSON that is processed. If for some reason my format is not these two, I throw an error saying format was not valid. So when we process the JSON, we await the JSON promise, and then we map the location and Clement was originally trying to do something with recursion, but then Ben suggested just to do this, just to hard code these. I think both are quite valid. I think the one with recursion works when you don't know all the different keys that are coming your way and you just wanna flatten everything. In this case, Ben suggested since there are not that many keys and there are not that many, that much nesting, just to hard code it. But I noticed something here is that street only consists of number and name. You'll have to trust me on that, as well as coordinates only consists of latitude and longitude. So what I can do is I can just spread street and spread coordinates and that's it. And then the next thing is, this was a remnant from what Clement did with, when he was trying to do it recursively. This is not necessary because of this new way that this was done. So all you need to do is just get the object keys from there. Because this object is gonna be flat, this recursion, not necessary. So that's it for this. But before we go back to our app.tsx file, let's take a look at a test. So I have, I'm running Jet I import my get data and my format and then I have a test that gets the JSON. I could have made this expected result a little bit more sophisticated, but for now you get the point. So when I get JSON, I expect the results to equal this expected result. Wait, no, this isn't right. Wait, <laughs> oh, oh no, it is right, Never mind. cool. And when I get CSV, I expect to get a string back. And when we look at the test tab, we see that everything passes. Now, looking at the app.tsx file, a lot of it is actually quite similar. I removed a lot of dead code and there's not that much that is actually different between the original code that was written by Clement and this code here. I'll just go through it a little bit here. First off, I changed the sorting directions into integers. It makes it a little bit simpler down below. The next big change is using intl collator. This is another native browser class that I have only used for one thing, and that is for comparing string. In Clement's code, he was grabbing the values from a given key, and then based on the sorting direction, he had these if statements that would return either negative one or one. With intl collator, this this is not really necessary because it already has a compare function. And the only change that we need to make is to add this sorting direction. So that's why I have ascending and descending and unsorted being these values. Now for get next sorting direction, it has a bunch of if, if statements which all return. So I just turned that into a ternary statement. Same thing with get filtered rows. There was a bunch of return statements, so there's no need to have these brackets and fat arrow functions. So I just removed those. Next thing is that this wasn't really used, so I got rid of it and then then the sorting directions was an object where, where the keys would be all the different headers and they were initialized to unsorted. I didn't find that solution as being particularly valuable because you only care about the current sort. So I replaced that with instead of an object with the keys being all the headers to just having one object that has a key and a direction. And this is the current sort. And that made sorting really easy because all I needed to do is just to check, okay, is my sort key after I click on sort, is it the same as the header that I clicked on? If it is, get the next sorting direction. If it's not, just default to ascending. And then sort the data by that key and that direction and set the current sort as that key in that direction. And that's it. The rest is more or less the same. There could be a little bit more refinements that could be done. Given that Clement had about 45 minutes to solve this problem from scratch, isn't really someone who is actively a front-end developer. I think he did really well. I think that under that kind of pressure, he performed really well. The only things that I think held him back is the usage of some native browser functions and classes like UR intl as well as fetch and then the second thing is test tests are so valuable i would love to see at least one test to show that the candidate is thinking about this kind of thing anyways i hope 
you enjoyed this completely unsolicited video. Let me know if I'm completely off base and that I'm crazy. To answer Maui's question, I think, yeah, Clement overcomplicated the flattening process because he was thinking of the more general case and not the specific case that Ben was talking about. I think they're both valid solutions. As, as long as they're well tested, I would be happy to receive either of those solutions. The thing is, the recursive solution scales better, but adds more technical complexity. And in terms of not flattening it all together, that was part of the requirements. So I'm not exactly sure what people are talking about. Maybe the only other option would be instead of using JSON to use CSV. And in that case, your first row will be your headers and then all subsequent rows are just gonna be arrays. And those indexes are all going to correspond with the headers. So when it comes to sorting and when it comes to searching, all that stuff can remain the same pretty much. The only difference is that instead of having headers that are nice and clean, you would have dots in it as we saw in the CSV at the beginning of the video. So you need to have some sort of mapping function to map those dotted names names into actual human readable. But I think that's it. If you guys want to see more code reviews, definitely know, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, send me a link to a video where people are doing this type of thing. And maybe I might find myself reviewing it one of these days and posting another video. So definitely let me know. Leave a comment.